Hey, it's Sarah from Rolling Stone, and this is part two of the interview with Paul Stanley about his new soul album, Now and Then, with Paul Stanley Soul Station. You have Eric Singer from KISS in the band. When you were in KISS, did you ever before try playing uh, soul together? Or did you ever think about incorporating soul into your um, soul album? Hmm. Um, I'm, I'm sure if I listened to my first solo album, I would hear those influences, inspirations. Um, Look, one of my influences was Steve Marriott. Well, Steve Marriott was completely influenced by black music. Um, Robert Plant, Rod Stewart, you know, Rod. Um, I sat with Rod last year and, and, and played him a bunch of the Soul Station stuff. And he was just blown away. His roots, Sam Cooke, um, David Ruffin. Um, so, you know, I, I, it's, it's, uh, it's amazing music and um, crosses so many barrier barriers and also, again, has influenced so many people. And when you were in KISS, did you ever like jam together some like soul songs um, before or? Yeah, we would play them. Um, Sometimes during sound checks, we do Archie Bell and the Drells, Tighten Up, um, mm -hmm. and some other songs. But <clears throat> back to Eric, if you took a quote unquote hard rock drummer or metal drummer, whatever you want to call it, and put them into Soul Station, it would be a disaster. Eric is, is a consummate musician and grew up actually playing in big bands with his dad. So... Mm -hmm. Um, as soon as I, I, I thought of, uh, putting soul station together, my first thought was, well, Eric's got to play. Um, and he is the, you know, he's one of the backbones. Yeah. And so many fans have been so happy to, to see him. They were really excited. I saw, but you also have originals on your, um, on the album. And mm -hmm. I wanted to ask how that experience of writing soul has been different in comparison to writing like rock songs, did it come natural to you or? It, it was totally natural because it wasn't, again, it wasn't a matter of let me try to write in the style of, you know, fill in the blank. Um, I was immersed in the music. We were playing live. We were in the studio. We were spending time together. So writing it was only natural. It was uh, an extension. It, it, it was exactly what it is. It was an extension of the songs that we were recording in the studio. Um, mm -hmm. Initially, the idea was to basically, um, the album would be very close to the set list that we were doing live. And as we kept going, I started thinking, we should bridge this into the present. So we're not just living in the past, although um, the past is full of these great riches. I thought, um, let me write a, a one song. And I wrote Save Me From You. And when I did the strings and the horns and we recorded it, it sounded fantastic. So mm -hmm. I've been told by others. <laughs> and um, I thought, let me write another one. And I did that and then I wrote another and another. And at five, I decided to cut it off because I wanted, again, I wanted the classic songs to root us so that we could grow like, like a tree into the present. And the, the five new tunes are not new and improved versions of the classics, they're, the same they're from the same tree so um that music is as valid today as it was in its heyday and the proof is in the new tracks mm -hmm. and the transition is so like seamlessly you don't yes yeah, seamless is the word that comes up when people hear it um sometimes people say i don't i don't remember that song who did that one they go, well, that's, that's an original. So, 
you know, seamless is the word, you know, that comes up um, often. Was it like is a very collaborative process still? Everybody got everybody's personality and everybody is represented in, in the music and in the live shows too. You know, the idea that I would hog the spotlight, it's, I'm happy being in the band as opposed to, it's not my backup band. When we play live, um, the three other singers I, I'm like, get your ass out front and 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 knock everybody dead, you know, do a song. Mm -hmm. um, and they weren't necessarily used to that, being in a band and singing backgrounds for some of the big artists, they were just background. And in Soul Station, no, nah, it, it's, it's much more, I'm smiling, it's much more a family where everybody gets to show off. Yeah, you can see that in um, in the video, especially that you that you just put out. I thought that was pretty. I don't know. Everyone was really close together, was standing next to each other, and yeah, it looked like a family who's just like enjoying jamming together and just doing what they love to do. And that's that's the way it's supposed to be. Music should, I think, uh, should be joyous. And it should be the meeting of different minds and different ideas. And uh, everybody in Soul Station has played with um, Whitney Houston, Natalie Cole, Stevie Wonder, Smokey, John Mayer, Pink, Christina Aguilera, uh, The Temps, the list goes on and on. But nobody's happier than, than doing this. Can you tell me a little bit more about the people who are actually in Soul Station? Yeah, um, our musical director, uh, the keyboard player, who I'll refer to as Maestro, because uh, he's really the one who oversees and, and interprets whatever I, I tell him when we're doing charts for strings or horns. I'll sing him parts and then he'll uh, chart them. Well. Mm -hmm. Alex, Alessandroni is, um, he was musical director for Whitney Houston and Bobby Brown and <clears throat> Natalie Cole and <clears throat> Pink. Um, Sean Hurley, our bass player, um, last toured with John Mayer. Mm -hmm. uh, the three other singers, um have all once again uh, sung with all the the best out there um again the, the you know the the string players they're um uh los angeles philharmonic orchestra hollywood bowl orchestra um you know everybody's top top shelf um you know, I, I can't say enough about them, but uh, um, Crystal Starr, who does a, a duet on the album with me on a song called Whenever You're Ready, um, her dad was a backup singer for Jackie Wilson. Oh, and wow. She, and she sung with everybody. Her dad comes to all the shows and goes, you know, they sound just like all those, you know, those bands. And he sounds just you know, like all those singers. So it's always fun. Um, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, people who I respect and look up to have really been blown away and, and love what the band is doing. And that's, How the, it feel? it's the ultimate compliment, you know, to have, um, to have, you know, Rod or Paul Rogers or, um, Tony Braxton, um, you know, Lenny Kravitz, all these people, you know, loving, loving what they hear. That, that's, uh, that um, Otis Williams from the Temps, the, the last Temp who, who's kept the flame going, he couldn't say enough. I, I can't even quote what he said about, um, just my imagination because it sounds 
unbelievable, but he, you know, thought it was stellar. So, um, you know, it's humbling and very gratifying. With the album, you're also walking in, in big shadows. And I wanted to ask you what your personal idols are. Wow. Um, you know, let, let me say that um, in doing some of the classic songs, I didn't want the band or myself to be doing a paint by numbers version um, or imitating or, or doing an impersonation. Um, what I wanted us to, to caption what we have been live is the intensity and the passion and the joy of those songs. In terms of uh, singing, um, I'm not Al Green, I'm not Eddie Kendricks, I'm not Smokey Robinson or Levi Stubbs, nor um, do I want to imitate them. Um, I think that those are big shadows. Rather than walk in those shadows, I'd rather walk next to them. Um, mm -hmm. In other words, uh, in understanding the intent of a song and staying true at least overall to the melody, I think if you can really get into the song and what it's about, I think you can do it and do it successfully. Wow, it must be an amazing experience. And also like the people that you put together there. Um, was it, did you know each other before already or how, how did you come together all of you? Did you just send out something it, and then people came to you? Or? It's so crazy that um, most of the band didn't know each other. Oh. And it feels like family, it's the craziest thing. Um, Let's see, I got um, Eric, which was easy, and our guitar player, Raphael. Raphael played in my Live to Win solo band, and he also had been a guitar player for Pink and Christina Aguilera, and really a, just one of those guys who can play anything amazingly. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, then Sean Hurley, the, the bass player, had played with, he had done a, a, a few tracks on my last solo album. And uh, his roots are really James Jamerson and, and uh, all, the, all the great uh, Motown and uh, Stax greats, you know, Duck Dunn. Um, and uh, from there, I, I just kept, I would just call people mm -hmm. whose names I got and everybody said, yeah, this sounds great. You know, when I would say, you know, I'm putting together this, this uh, Motown Philly soul band and everybody goes, yeah. Um, Ray Islas, the uh, percussionist who plays with everybody. Um, I called Ray out of the blue um, and told him and he goes, I'm there, you know. He was also a major Kiss fan, which was very funny. Um, everybody, you know, we're texting every day. We we call, we socialize. Um, it's just interesting. It just fell together. John Pappenbrook, the the lead trumpet. Um, besides uh, all the people who I've mentioned, he also played with Sinatra. He played with Buddy Rich. So uh, it's just this wild group of people and we have a ball. We absolutely have a ball. And that's what you hear in the music.